Welcome back for yet another exciting C Sharp web tutorial. In this one, we're going to talk about topics from Chapter 7 about error handling. As you know, we've been doing try catches for quite some time. Try, which means attempt to do something, and then catch the error if it doesn't work. Pretty simplistic. But you can notice right here, we're going to take a number in and then we're going to divide it. And one of the things a computer can't do is divide by zero. So you'll see how this catch can handle a couple errors, but it doesn't tell you which one. So for example, I'm going to move this over to here. And we type in 10x, and I hit validate. We know 10x cannot be converted. And we get the message box that pops up. Nothing too difficult. We've been doing it for a while. Right here, and valid number was supplied. That's this. We're calling the show method. You got to give it four things: the message, the title, what kind of button, and what kind of icon you want. So here, this is the message. Notice it's separated by a comma. This dot text comes up here and says this project. The text that's on the form, and that way I can get continuity to the message. Not the message, but the name or the title of the project. I can get in the window by just saying this.txt. Message box button's OK, gets the OK button, and message box icon gives you this. OK, so I click OK. So say I put in a really big number. Remember, a short can handle up to only about 65,000. So this too should not work, but we don't know. Was it bad data? Was the number too big? We don't know, we just send a valid number. And the user would say, hey, that's a valid number, but it's not valid short because it's too big. Okay, and the other thing that can happen is I can put in a valid number that fits into a short. However, it's going to convert and it's going to divide and that's going to cause a problem because you can't divide by zero. So I had five different things come up. I'm not five, I'm sorry, three <laughs> different things that came up. I got ahead of myself. That we did capture the error, but we didn't tell the user exactly what was wrong. It's not an invalid number, it's a valid number. We're just not dividing right. So there's ways we can fix that code. To be able to differentiate between the different types of errors my code has encountered, I'm going to go back to Blackboard. And if you look here, we have something called an exception hierarchy. Exception is the highest level. It's all the exceptions below it. And there's different types of exception. There's format exception, arithmetic exception, and overflow. So a format is when you put 100x and you try to convert it to a number. That is a format exception. Arithmetic exception can be further defined into a divide by zero exception. And we also have a overflow. And that is where I try to put 100 million into a byte, into a short or a byte, something that can't handle it. So I'm going to come back over here. I do have to change one thing I noticed when the program was running. It did not start in the center screen, so we're going to fix that. And I'd like to have you look at the code. And you can see this catch works, but it's pretty basic. It handles all exceptions. Okay, so I'm going to show you a better way. Okay, so here's what I did. I've replaced the regular catch, which you're used to, but I put parentheses in the type of exception I'm looking for. So I'm looking for a format exception, and this is what I'm going to refer to it as. Okay, so an invalid number was supplied. Same as before, but the only difference is I added format exception. And down here, I added another catch. So here's the one catch we had, and I just added this to it. I also handled the overflow. Notice overflow exception. Where I get these from is right here. So exception is like the grandparent. It can handle this one, or I could just handle this one. So I can go after all of them, or specific exceptions. These are predefined in C Sharp, just like the byte data type, and the if statement. So let's go back over here. And that is why it's like this lighter blue, which is an object. So a format exception, if I get a format exception, it will do this code. If it's an overflow, I'm going to do something differently. And notice the overflow, when in loading in memory, is referred to as OE. So the object, the overflow, uh, uh, sorry, the overflow exception object has a message and it has the type, 
and has the stack trace. So if you look here, I can actually not have to hard code or put these values in. I can take the message from the OE or the overflow exception object that someone already set up for me. And down here is how I can handle all types of exceptions. So this handles the format exception, this handles the overflow, and this handles every other type of exception. And notice I got the new line character. That's how I get one message on a separate line from the type of message it is. So let's try this. And what I'm going to tell you to do is you should highlight this code and cut and paste it into all your projects to use going forward. Okay? You'd have to change, obviously, the line of code here and whatever you want to do here. And then you may have to change some of the messages. But pretty much you wouldn't have to change anything here, here. All right, let's run it. I'm going to move it over here. Let's put in 10x. Okay, we attempt to convert. And we know it's a format exception error. So we get this error. Okay, same as before, we get our user supplied message or the program supplied message. The title comes from here and we put it here. And we have an OK button and we have the, um, the error. Click OK. So we s highlight, we focus, and we leave. Let's change it to 100,000, even a bigger number, which we know it can be converted, right? But a short cannot accommodate that. So we get an overflow. It skips the format and goes here. And look, instead of putting our own message like we do here, we ask the object, the instantiated OE object, which is of this type of object. So this is like a int, and this is like IH, you know, like when you give it a name. This is the name we give it, and this is the data type we want to work with. So here comes the full message. I don't even have to write the message. I just, hey, what is the message? That goes here. Value is too large or too small for an int. The new line gets this onto a separate line, and the get type gives the full details of what it is. We get the new line, and we get the stack trace, which tells us what line number the error is on. And we have the OK button and error. Keep in mind the message, the new line, the get type, the new line, and this stack trace are just the first thing we give to the show method. We still have the title here, we still have the button, and we have the icon. Okay, so we run the code again, and let's get the divide by zero error. I'm going to change this down to 100. We know 100 is a valid number, and we know it's a valid short. So let's step through the code. We divide. Notice it comes down to this generic exception. It's not this type of exception format. It's not the overflow. It's the generic. So let's go see what the message says. Step through the code, and we got so instead of giving a full detail, like here, giving it the type and the stack, I'm just going to give them the message and where in the code did the message or that error occur. So attempt to divide by zero, and it tells you right here at line 37. So now you know how to write all types of exceptions. Now here's my programming challenge to you. Can you rewrite the code above to write one exception handler for all errors? If you write a generic handler, you should show the user as much information as possible to help them determine the problem using the message box object. Make sure you show them the error message, the type of error message, and a list of methods that were called and the exception occurred and what line number. I'll be showing you the solution very soon.